Gareth Bale on the Eric Anders Lang Show. I'm excited. I'm excited for you to be here. I'm excited to be on here. <laughs> I'm excited for me to be here. Um, you, I, we were saying a little bit before the podcast got started, you're so excited to be talking about golf. Yeah, it's, it makes a change. <laughs> but because you don't normally talk about golf. No, well, normally when we're doing shoots, it's obviously naturally always football and football this, football that. So it's it's nice to yeah, have my hobby to talk about. We, uh, a lot of listeners of the podcast, mostly golf fans from around the world, uh, some of them in America are going to wonder which NFL team you're on. <laughs> They're mistaken. <laughs> you're not on an NFL team. You're on perhaps the best soccer team, if you don't mind, for yeah. one moment. Soccer's fun with me. On planet Earth. Can yeah, you, can you say that or no? Yeah, of course. Do you we're, we're probably the most, well, we're the most successful, so... Yeah, there's there's no reason why not to say it. <laughs> you, uh, I'm curious to know when you think of the words football and soccer. Do you, is there a de do you care? Is it no? I'm, it doesn't bother me. I spend holidays in in America, so <laughs> so you understand soccer's so, yeah, fine. So yeah, it's fine for me. It's so weird that they're called different things, but they're the same thing. <laughs> I know it really is strange. Yeah. So you, whenever I because I have a few friends in America, whenever I say football, they just like what? I'm like, oh yeah. It right. just clicks like 10 seconds later. Um, you're one of the best footballers in the world. You didn't you. <laughs> you didn't blink when I said that. <laughs> How long? You believe that? I never. I, I, I just let other people talk about stuff like that. You, your trade to Real Madrid was at the time the record-breaking deal. At that time, yeah. At the time. Yeah. <laughs> were you like, oh my God. How, what do you? How do you see that in that moment when that's happening? Are you like, um, I just broke a record, and it's not even. I'm obviously great at what I do, and here's the proof. Yeah, no, I, everyone always says because when players go for big fees over here, I know it doesn't really happen so much in America where a transfer would happen. It's more of a trade, and yeah, it's and totally I get that. different. Yeah, so um, obviously over here when so someone gets maybe bought, maybe for the Americans, I'll just explain. Okay, there's two things that happens when you trade teams. Yeah. One is. The team basically buys you, yeah. But then there's also a salary, and you don't get any of that money. No, the the, the first team like that to, bought but... you, yeah, yeah, no. you're fine, <laughs> you're fine. But there's but then they have your salary, yeah. totally different, totally different, yeah. So there's two prices associated with you, yeah. So anyway, continue on. Sorry for interrupting. Um, anyway, so when obviously when a club buys a player for for a large fee, obviously normally there's a lot of well there's a lot of pressure behind the clubs paid. God knows how, how many millions for you, and there's there's kind of press for you to perform and stuff. But um, yeah, when when mine went through, I didn't. It was kind of strange. I knew it was the record world record at the time, and but yeah, I just kind of never really. I just didn't really think about it. It was just one of those things. I just wanted to play football, and yeah, whatever happened happened. I just wanted to try and, and give my best on the pitches. Where I guess a lot of other people are like, oh no, I have to prove my worth. Is where I kind of took a different approach to it, and yeah, just. Let it kind of get off my back. <laughs> so you never thought about doing like a full Dave Chappelle move to Africa, <laughs> never going to touch a football, a soccer, a soccer ball again. <laughs> no. You're fine with it. Yeah, no, it doesn't bother me. Um, we're going to get into golf. Yeah. Uh, I'm I'm curious to know your you, you. We met about an hour ago. You walked yeah. in here. We're at this tailor made fitting studio at Santander Golf Course in Madrid. Um, you walked in. I could tell immediately that your good person is not really the full description of you, but you know when you read quotes about you, everyone says you're very down to earth. Yeah, well, I am I'm just a normal person. Just happens to play football in with a lot of people watching. So uh, my, my friends keep me down to earth. Don't worry about that. <laughs> you can tell though. No, I mean I can tell. There's no air of where's my green room where's my area where's the ju where's the i ordered all of these things where where's the snacks i got my water i'm fine you would the, think with the level of success you've had yeah. in your field that you would easily be yeah i could have seen a chopper landing on the middle of the driving range i don't know how long how long was your drive here in the morning how long is your commute uh, no i came straight from training so it was about 20 minutes 25 20 minutes. minutes all right it's not too bad see but in america you'd be in a you'd be there'd be a different mode of transportation and maybe that's just me being an american the celebrity associated with things i guess it's it's kind of whatever you feel like you want to do um i feel like i'm quite happy to just get changed in front of everybody and, <laughs> and off it goes nothing no one's seen before so 
your parents uh, both live in the same house that they raised you in. Yeah. Your dad works in a, a high school. Is well, it? Yeah, used to. Yeah, used to. Yeah. And your mom, uh, similar job. She used, yeah, she used to work as an estate agent and then as a secretary to a solicitor. So, um, yeah, so, just a a normal background. Yeah, family. as normal as you can get. Yeah, yeah, just two working parents trying to provide for for their kids and their family, and yeah, just a regular person. <laughs> You offered them. You offered to buy them a house. I'm assuming, and they said yeah. no. Yeah, they 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 have all their friends and and all family around them. They they just comfortable where they are, and yeah, they just uh, just don't want to move. Yeah, there's been offers. Don't get me wrong, but they're happy where they are. Yeah, I feel like most athletes kind of the the you know we were talking to Harold Varner the other day, uh, you know, tour player, and you know he grew up with 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 nothing, right, and. Um, bought his parents a house and you know they're so excited yeah. about it and and he put a uh he he put a driving range on the back of their house so <laughs> so they can like hang out together you offered to buy them a house they said no so then you went and did your own golf thing at yeah, your house at my in own cardiff house. yeah so i'd always i'd always wanted to buy my house in cardiff and i always wanted land and always wanted to build a golf course i wanted to put a tennis court. i wanted to put i wanted i was a kid, young kid wanting to build a golf course that's <laughs> yeah. what you just said I, that's yeah. so exciting no it was it is still um but the thing is i'm never really home in cardiff so what i decided to do was build three holes first because if i build 18 and i'm never there it's gonna be a lot of maintenance a lot of waste really so i thought if i build three holes see if I like it, see how it goes, see if I like having it in my house for one. And then obviously when, if I do move back and that's kind of where we decide to kind of settle down after football, then we can build more. We have the land to do it. So, um, but yeah, it's whenever I go home now, we play with my friends. We have three par threes. We always play for drinks or whoever's paying for food or whatever and just have a laugh. Three par threes. Um, you left out the a tiny detail. <laughs> <laughs> there's, there's a there's a tiny detail. Uh, there is. They're not just. They're they're not just any par threes. No, we 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 based them off three holes that I really like. Seventeenth um, Sawgrass, which every golfer knows about. So we've had to call it the replica of because it's not exact same dimensions. Because I think for some purpose we're not allowed to do that so wait they called you and they're like you can't call it no but i think but it's just you're not allowed to do it or for some reason so it's a little bit smaller the green which actually makes it a bit harder <laughs> so <laughs> so then so then when i actually went to play sawgrass the green felt massive <laughs> right 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 <laughs> which i hit the green which was obviously good um yeah so we've got the 17th at sawgrass we've got the postage stamp at royal troon and we've got the 12th of augusta but with augusta we haven't got the water at the front yet because we didn't want to put the water in until we moved back because it's more closer to the house and we didn't want any problems. So there's there's a place for the water for Ray's Creek to go, I guess. But right. um, yeah, we haven't put that water in on that hole yet. That's uh, Those are three good holes. Yeah, those <laughs> are very good. Not bad. <laughs> I, I'm struggling to think of another one that you could add to it. I mean, you know, I guess, I guess what, what's going to be the fourth one, actually? You must what? have thought about it. Well, no, because the next we would probably try and put a par four or par five if we were right. to go next. So, yeah, I haven't really got that far. We've we thought of about things, but we thought of a few. The par five, it's the fifteenth Augusta, the one over the water. We hit down. Sure. We, we had we have the perfect spot for that to do it, but obviously, until I come back to Wales, obviously that's that's not going to happen. But we have a few ideas to to fit a few holes in. I, I have to ask you, have you played Augusta? No, I haven't, no. I mean, I have to imagine it's a phone call away. I've I've got ways to get on, but I feel like I want to be better before I go and play. I want to try and be as good as I can because I don't want to waste the experience of hacking the ball around kind of thing. I, I, I saw you hit balls. You, how much better do you need to get? You're, <laughs> you're, pretty, you're pretty good, man. I know, but I don't practice. What's your handicap right now? I'm... I'm between a three and a four three at the four. moment, um, but I don't play in any tournaments. I don't practice. I just whenever I have a day, I'll just go and play eighteen holes with my friends or my own or whatever. You, uh, you're, 
golf for you has takes up maybe a complicated reality. And this is something that if you're listening to this, you're probably and you don't live in Madrid or you don't follow football, you you don't know what I'm talking about. But but am I right? It's it's slightly complicated for you to play golf. Well, you wouldn't well, you wouldn't think it would be, but yeah, a lot of people have problems with me playing golf. I don't know what their reason is because I've spoken to doctors and this, that, the other, and everybody's fine with it. But the, especially the media have this perception that it's not good for me. It, you should be resting. Um, it can cause problems, injuries as where I've looked in America, people play on, for example, I know Steph Curry plays maybe on the morning of his game. <laughs> as you, where, you heard it on my podcast. Well, yeah, exactly. Steph and, Steph and, uh, Stefan Andre Iguodala yeah. played in the morning. Yeah, and I yeah, and I hear and I've and I've seen other things and here if I play two days before a game, it's like, what's he doing? <laughs> yeah, but the fans of Real Madrid are not interested in your golf game. No, not at all. No. <laughs> what yeah. about I mean off season you're fine. Yeah, off season is golf every day, two times a day, three times a day. <laughs> golf trip. You're you're yeah. a golf trip guy. Yeah. Do do you like to travel? Yeah, I do. Yeah. What's your favorite part about traveling? Um just going to other places, kind of just seeing, yeah, for, for me, seeing other golf courses because courses in America to to back home in Wales or in the UK is is completely different. There's more Lynx style in the UK as where in America this lush green, it's like target golf. The sand is just white. It's you, just... Your face is lighting up like you prefer <laughs> golf in America. Is that true? No, I do, yeah, 100%. Yeah, you, you yeah. really love it. Yeah, because when That's... I was growing up, I didn't really play too much golf in the UK. I never really got into it until more I came out here. So what, um, so wait, you, why, why did you get into golf? It's kind of like, uh, in the UK, it's a, it's kind of a, every footballer kind of grows up and then they play golf and you kind of then, when you get to that team and there's a group of boys who play golf, you kind of just go out with them and, and that's kind of how I started. And then, yeah, when I moved over here, the weather's obviously a million times better and right obviously can play golf a lot more and yeah just every time I played I got better and just the bug came as as everybody knows the golf bug just keeps going and going and going it really does and yeah I'm I'm even more got the bug now than than ever so so I so you're a righty at golf yeah but are you like a lefty in football in football yeah so I'm left foot right handed you hit your left foot yeah you're so the story that got me was you're so good with your left foot that when you were in high school, your teacher yeah. said you can't use it. Yeah, <laughs> that's funny. <laughs> Did that piss you off? No, it was not funny. For, that's what I was gonna say. It was not funny for me. <laughs> that would have pissed me off. I like, let me use my left foot. Yeah. So when he was because obviously in in the PE lessons you'd have a couple of groups. So as soon as he would turn, I was like left foot, left foot, bang, <laughs> goal. And then he and then they would all moan, and then I'd be like, no, I use my right. <laughs> no, no, no. I, are, are you really that much worse with your right foot? Yeah. You can't use it. No, I can use it, but it's more for standing on. <laughs> <laughs> so if you're lefty, your favorite side of the goal to be on is on the left side of the goal? I prefer to like hit it to the right. I kind of like whipping it, if you get what I mean. That's what it's called, a whip? Yeah, kind of, yeah. So for like in golf, that's called a, a cut if you're no, right. it's probably more of a draw. Oh, you like to hit a draw? Yeah. All right, we're going to... The draw I, has more pace on it, basically. See, the thing is, if we start talking about football, you're going to get bored really quick because I don't know anything about it. Yeah. I'm completely useless. Let's go back to golf. <laughs> you're like, please, let's get back into golf. You, What's your shot shape? You hit a, you hit a bit of a draw? Um, I like going more straight. Come on. I don't say that. No, I try to Nobody go straight. Nobody says they hit a straight ball. No, I don't hit it. I try to hit it. <laughs> Why? But, no, I can I can shape it both ways, but I feel like... If I hit it straight and you get a little bit of a fade, you're still in the fairway. If you get a bit of a draw, you're still in the fairway. So I like to play more of a straight ball See, than anything. This is where I'm wondering if you're lying to me about your handicap. Because uh, <laughs> no one says they want to hit a straight ball. Because seriously, I mean, have you talked to someone about this? Mm. I feel like you need... Do you have a swing coach? Nope. Okay, we need to get you a swing coach. <laughs> seriously, though, because you've got to take one side of this golf course out of play. Yeah, no, I, no, I agree. But the right is always... I never hit it right, right. I, okay. I find it impossible to hit. Like, if a anything, slice. I just hook it. I can't hit a... I saw you hit a slice. Yeah. I saw... I was, that, saw that was my driver. That was one hour ago. Yeah, but that was just with my driver at the moment because it's in my head. We're working on the driver. You yeah. got the new sim. Yeah. You got the 10 and a half degree. Yeah. And the same shaft as you. And we're working with the same shaft. Yeah. <laughs> That's That makes me feel great. Yeah. Well, you... um. 
but uh, wait, what was, so so you but the straight ball just it's I'm still having problems wrapping my head around it. Yeah, I I just like to play this. I just whenever I hit a good drive, it goes quite straight. Yeah, I don't have that. I don't have that in my bag. It's, it's good to have. But, but Tiger doesn't. <laughs> Tiger doesn't hit a straight ball. No, of course, but I just seem to when I hit my driver well, it goes very straight, which Unbelievable. is what I like. But then at the moment, the last three weeks. I've just my swing's just gone a little bit on my driver, but everything else seems to be all right. We're gonna play a match. Yeah, we're about the same handicap. Mm -hmm. Um, so we'll play straight up. Yeah, I feel like you have the advantage. Why? Um, well, because you're a highly talented professional <laughs> athlete. Uh, you don't have jet lag. I, <laughs> that, I, that, yeah, I'll give I, you that one. I landed in Madrid this morning. I, I thought it was going to be, this is the course you play on a lot, but then I've got a lot of scar tissue from this course. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I've got no bad go, memories. It can go both ways. Now, so here's the thing. We'll play, what you, typically speaking, it's it's we need to determine what we're going to play for today. Okay. So what do you want to play for? I don't really know. So this is, a, I'd like to introduce an idea that I had on the way over here. Okay. With golf, you handicap the ability. So yeah. if I was a little worse than you, you would yeah. give me a stroke. Yeah. What if we handicapped the 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 match stakes? So what's your net worth? <laughs> I Hundreds don't know. of millions <laughs> of, of pounds, not even dollars. <laughs> My net worth is less than a million dollars. Dollars and pounds. So if I maybe wager a hundred dollars, the good thing is I don't bet. You, you don't bet now. <laughs> no, you no, tell I, me. I, I do, but I bet for like ten pounds. See, I'm thinking. Okay, so I'll bet. Oh, so you'll. So that means I'll wager you ten cents. My ten cents is your ten dollars. Wait, why is don't really? you? Why don't? <laughs> why don't you like to gamble? Why don't you like to bet on the golf course? Um, coming from someone who also doesn't like to, I just don't. I prefer to just pay for like drinks or some food right because it's I'll just cover this yeah like whoever loses or i'll pay for 20 20 euros or something right something that's not gonna really annoy the other person if they lose or vice versa what's the nicest thing that you've done now that you have this sort of uh you know we're now that you're in the realm of anything's possible what's the nicest thing i've done for someone else um I try to look after my family a lot. So, yeah, mainly doing things for them. We're in the process of trying to start to do other things now, further afield for charities and stuff. Um, because the problem is my time, I don't have a lot. And if I'm going to start something, I want to kind of be all in. So at the moment, it's we haven't started because I haven't got the time to put into it to maybe get it to where we want to do. So, yeah, that's something that I want to do when I come closer to retirement. Um yeah, but at the moment, just kind of looking after my family, my my sister, my parents, my wife's sister, her parents. So, yeah, just looking after family and friends, really. Because you're not like a fancy, you're not wearing a watch. Are you a watch guy? I have uh, them, but the more we, we get them when we win a trophy. So they're, <laughs> they're not free. really you. You're not like, I want this watch. No. If, you're not if a, I, there's no. not a Lamborghini outside. You, you got an SUV. Yeah. I, I see them all over LA. You're not a flashy guy. No, not really, no. Not really. It's just, I just, just golf. <laughs> yeah. I just want to hit a straight ball. <laughs> straight ball. And some course in America. Yeah, and spend time <laughs> with my family. That's, that's that's all I need. Golf and family and friends, and I'm a happy man. You know, very I, simple. I heard the story the other day about a investment banker who was down in Mexico, like in some little fishing village, and uh, he was out there kicking the soccer ball with his son, and and some other guy was down there kicking the soccer ball with his son. And they started talking, and the fish and the the other guy, he, the the investment banker asked the other guy, the Mexican guy who lives there, he says, "What do you what do you do?" He says, "I'm a fisherman," and uh, he says, "Yeah, you know, I wake up in the morning, uh, have breakfast with my wife and kids, then I go catch some fish. I come back, have dinner with my wife and kids, watch the sunset. It's great." And the fisherman says to the banker, "He says, what do you do?" He says, "I've got you know ten companies. I'm worth like ten billion dollars. This and that." And the guy says, well, what do you want to do? And he says, I, I want to basically come down here, wake up and have breakfast with my wife, go fishing, come back and have dinner with them and watch the sunset. And I thought about that and I was like, ah, there's, there's really only so many things that you can do that aren't more important than your family and enjoying yeah, your time. For sure, for sure. And that's why I love my golf. I love spending time with my family and my kids and my wife and my friends and 
yeah, that's basically <laughs> all I do because it's what makes me happy. I don't need to, I don't, I don't really like, you have a stage when I was younger, I bought some cars and yeah, kind of really got out of my system very quick and realized it's more of a waste of money than anything. So um, yeah, I just like doing the things that I want to do and enjoy doing. And yeah, I think the best ways to do it is, like I said, we go on holiday every year with my friends. Um, we do a golf tournament every year that like I pay for and we all go and just have a laugh. We do it every year. Then I go on holiday with my family and then it's, then it's back to training again. So <laughs> I have a very simple life and I'm I'm very happy just being very simple. You said that golf makes you happy. Do you think that you're in the minority? Golf is a frustrating game for a majority of people, I would say. Yeah, no, it is. But I used to... I've never been one to really have a temper on the golf course. And a few of my friends, I've seen some clubs over some trees. I've actually got a video on my phone at this golf course. Because at the start, my friend used to live here with me for a couple of years because just helped me settle in. And it was on the second hole. <laughs> He's launched his club. It's got stuck in the tree. <laughs> so I'm like, for one, why have you got so frustrated? It's the second hole. <laughs> yeah, we, And he only made a bogey. I'm that's like, all it was. Yeah, but his head goes very quickly. So his, his club's stuck up in the tree. And then I'm just, I'm, then I was like, get your phone out, start videoing. So he drives the buggy up the tree. I'm like, you ain't going to be able to get that. So he gets on the roof of the buggy, <laughs> still can't reach it. So then I was like, do you want a rake? He was like, yeah, give it here now, like very angrily. So I give him the rake and I'm recording him now and thinking, sending this straight into the WhatsApp group. <laughs> First thing I want to do. And he was like, if you, you better start recording or throw this rake at your head. <laughs> I was like, I'll back off a little bit. <laughs> You're like, my so he, body's pretty and, important. And he's right? literally poking his clothes, finally got it down and his head just, second hole completely gone. And I just find that I don't get like that. Did You can just... Oh, by the way, if you're listening to the podcast, you can watch it on YouTube. Gareth's got great style. Adidas. Do you want to do an ad for Adidas right now? They sponsor the podcast. Talk about your shoes. I am. I'm already sponsored by them. Yeah, no, you're good. No, but I mean a podcast ad. I usually go in and I say, This is only chaos. my second ever podcast. I don't really know what podcast that is. Your first one is. was 10 minutes before this with Chris Trotty. <laughs> so I'm your... not really... No, but you're... So we're wearing the same shoes right now. The Code Chaos. Can you get a shot of this? This is not planned. No, it wasn't. No. I came to Spain with one pair of shoes, and they're the same exact pair that you have. Tell me about your golf. Tell me about your golf shoes, because you you wear Adidas golf shoes. Yeah, I've always worn Adidas. I, hang on, I just I dropped the recorder. Okay, back to Gareth's first podcast ad read. <laughs> this is big. This is big money. No, this you is. could make a lot of money from this. <laughs> this could be your next thing. Well, they already. I've already got a sponsorship with them. You're so. already good. <laughs> Well, you can build them an extra hundred bucks. Well, you know, no, the, but I do like the new shoes they've just brought. The Code Chaos, I've got them in white and I'm black over there. I saw. Black the, and gray. I don't have the black ones. I've got blue ones, and I've got. Have you seen the ones with the the white? Well, they're more grey, but they've got. Um, oh, here's the here's the. Uh, I wore these yesterday. Love it too. You did you say you bought those or you got? No, them? no, I got. Oh, okay, them. I wore them yesterday though. What was the last thing you bought? I'm just curious, like in a store, not food or anything. Did you buy you buy clothes? What do you like to you buy? Some my my clothes. wife buys my clothes. Your wife buys your clothes. <laughs> yeah, I get them from Zara or she goes. She dresses you. Pretty much. She, she's at the shop and she goes, "Do you want anything?" I'm like, "Oh, just a couple of pairs of jeans, a few t-shirts." She I'll knows what she wants, and ultimately, you're just getting dressed for her anyway, right? Yeah, I, got, I'm not impressing anyone Cause, else because you, on your own, you're good with sweats. I feel like oh, every day into training, I'm the same. It's just why do I want to travel in uncomfortable clothes? Twenty minutes of training, take them off. Put them back on, go 20 minutes home and take them off. <laughs> yeah, just wear the same thing. <laughs> just put a tracksuit on. Um, okay, so we're going to play a match. We haven't just, I guess you're going to, we're going to, you're going to buy some drinks at the end. If you lose, I'm going to buy some drinks at the end if I lose. No problem. I feel like we can do better than that. I feel like we can do better. I, I would say we could play for the new shoes, but you've already got a pair. I have them. <laughs> it's the only thing in my life I do well, we have. Could, we could play for the, the other black color. pair. What size shoe are you? These are 10 and a half. We have the same size foot. I'm normally a 10, but in golf you, shoes, I seem to be 10. Your foot is, is worth a little more than mine. <laughs> well, the one is. <laughs> is your foot, is the left foot insured? Um, it's got to be. It is, yeah, it is. Because your left foot is the follow-through foot. Because you're righty. Yeah, but all my problems have been on my right foot. Really? With, all my with, operations. Oh, really? Yeah. Why is that? Is that because where you stop and... No, I've just been hit on the oh, right foot. So other players. Because I've always got the f ball on my left, so... Obviously, I keep the ball away from someone and they come through on the right and normally hit me. Slide tackle. Yeah, basically. 
But I have had, I have injured my right ankle a few times. I've snapped, I've got no ligaments in the outside of both ankles. <laughs> really? <laughs> what do you mean? snapped. So someone would like hit you like that and then you obviously bend your foot. And Wait, can I snap. feel it? Well, no, because it's in your ankle, but it's kind you, of... Gone. I wouldn't notice? No, you probably wouldn't notice. Oh, okay. no. I'm not a doctor. <laughs> <laughs> you <laughs> no, can tell. I'm, I'm probably closer. I dropped out of high school. school. <laughs> what was your favorite subject in school outside of, outside of like uh, football? Um... I was always good at like athletic. It was always just sport. Yeah. And every teacher used to go to me, you have to have a, like another plan. I'm like, yeah, yeah. No. <laughs> no. No, you're like, no, Gareth Bale has one <laughs> f- plan and it's to break the record. <laughs> <laughs> Which I never thought I'd ever do. I never even thought about it when I was younger. It was more just, all I wanted to do was be a professional footballer. I didn't want to, I never planned to try and, get to this level, this level. I just wanted to play for Southampton where I was at. I just wanted to be a professional footballer and make it for the first team there. And that was like my goal. And I think I said before, like I've just seemed to keep making the goals so I can reach them. Then I get to the next one. So it's always, I've always got something to kind of keep my motivation and go for. And it's, it's, it's been helpful to me because I think by having a goal, it kind of gives you that motivation the drive to get there. Once you achieve it, you have to set the next one. If you don't set one, it's like you feel a bit lost. Where do I go from here? What do I do? So, right. yeah, I've always just had those little goals and they've just been getting bigger and bigger and bigger. <laughs> yeah, because in, in the UK, you can there's so many different leagues and, oh, and yeah. teams that you could go play for a team and earn the same you as a pay, teacher salary. You could pay somebody to pay. <laughs> you, what do you mean? Well, some of my friends, you have to pay. To oh, play. you lose money you to lose play. Money, oh, yeah. I see. <laughs> you have to pay subs. You're right. That is a very low goal. That is very <laughs> that's attainable. A low one. <laughs> but if you if you enjoy it, that's what you do. Well, that's what I do for golf. <laughs> so, I think I know why you love golf. What, what, what do you do? Do you is your love of football different or the same? Um, it's definitely it's different now because it's a job. I guess is where golf now is. Like I can go out and just be on my own and just smile. I've got no pressure apart from myself. Just hit a ball, walk to it or drive to it. And just, yeah, just it's just fun. Play with your friends. You can play different games and there's just no pressure, no stress. Normally nice weather here, so. You know, that's so interesting because <clears throat> I have the opposite. Yeah, but your job's golf. <laughs> <laughs> See, but you think it is. I mean, it, it kind of is. Yeah. It, it, the irony is my job is to seem like I'm playing a lot of golf. Yeah. And I have found that in some ways, I mean, don't get me wrong. I always enjoy playing golf and yeah. it's always very fun. But by the sheer quantity of time that I spend thinking and playing and talking and walking around golf courses and traveling to golf courses, mm. you know, my one friend, I had dinner with him in LA last night and he said, you know, there's this course in Washington State called Gamble Sands. Uh, it's 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 a very good course that's not very popular. It's like yeah. Bandon Dunes. And his fiance has a house right across the street from it. It's very beautiful and peaceful. He says, "Let's go to Gamble Sands. It's a three hour flight for me and a two hour drive. I can't think of anything I want to do less than get on a plane to go play a golf course. <laughs> no joke, no joke. And the sad part about that is, is that that wasn't me." The, the 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 original Eric was like, I will fly anywhere <laughs> seven flights. I'll sit in seat yeah. 9,702 with nine hour layover. I'll eat nothing. Peanut M&Ms, <laughs> <laughs> nothing. You know, I'll, I'll drink the faucet water in the bathroom. <laughs> I'll play the twilight tea time, maybe yeah. with a recycled golf ball. All of these things were just yeah. like, it was a natural because I loved yeah. it and it was an escape for me. Now it's just very different, you know, and now it's yeah. it's a business now. Yeah, that's what, that's what it does become. And I think for me, like with us, we get a lot of pressure every game. This If you don't play well, there's scrutiny. There's like, I've had 80,000 people in the stadium whistling me because I haven't played well. <laughs> Whistle? Like, it's kind that's of bad? Thing. Well, yeah, it's not great. It's not great. <laughs> it's not great. <laughs> I've had it a few times as well. Oh. But um, the first time was a bit like, oh, what is this? Wait, but, the whistling is like a boo? Yeah, yeah, basically. This, over here, yeah, they whistle. It's kind of a thing. Oh, it's like super weird sounding, oh, yeah, I bet. It's, it's not it's nice. 80,000 people <laughs> And it whistling. doesn't do your confidence that great. That really? good a deal either. But, um, Why would your home fans do that? That's really brutal. This is the biggest question and i just don't get it because you would expect if you're not having a good time on the pitch 
you would expect your fans to get behind you and try and make you do better because it'll make them happy. But it seems to be that they do the opposite. They just whistle you, which consequently makes you feel worse. You lose your confidence and then you play worse, which is going to make them even more upset. So, Have you talked to John Rahm about this? I feel like you would have some insight. Yeah, he probably, he probably knows. It's kind of a, a Real Madrid thing. It's kind yeah. of... Other clubs do it, but it's especially known... Well, because Rahm is like a, a hothead. But he's an athletic yeah. Bilbao. Uh, he's from Bilbao. He's from right. the, the north. So which I'm they're ignorant. more of a family... They're more like of a kind of family club. Right. They only play players there from, that were born in that area. So it's oh, kind of like... That's an unusual... Yeah, you know, it's very, very... It's, I don't think there's another club that does it, really. Interesting. So, um, it's which, to their detriment, though. In a way, but they sell their place for a lot of money because they can't afford. They don't. They can't. They have to find someone before they can sell them from that region. Right. So if they sell them, they sell them for a lot of money because right. They don't really buy anybody because everyone comes through the youth team. So interesting. In a way, it's quite. As long as you've got good players, it's a good thing to do. But you know, golf doesn't have that negative rooting. No, exactly. unless you're Patrick Reed, I guess. Which is yeah, but then that's more of something that maybe you did rather than yeah. Oh, I see what you're like, saying. Yeah, my might like for example, if I've just I might have missed an easy chance to score a goal, and then the whistles come and you're like, my confidence is already down because so I've just missed an easy goal. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and now way. it's just going even more down. Which <laughs> the next time it comes, it just the goal seems it's like it's like a pet, and the goal just gets smaller. The goal gets smaller. <laughs> So, so I, that's really interesting. I can see why golf for you probably gives you something very different than it gives me. Yeah. It gives you complete isolation almost. Yeah, no, it's really nice. And normally you would think the etiquette on the course, if someone was to see me, they wouldn't come over. But some do, some don't. But it's just nice to, to be on the course and just get away from everything. Just like I play with a few friends or even if sometimes I go and play on my own, just put some music on. And just go and play 18 holes and just really just kind of relax and get away from everything. I don't have to think about football, especially if it's not going well. Do you believe that golf actually helps your football? I do, yeah. <laughs> A lot of people think no. no not many people <laughs> but, in Spain do. No, but, but golf, yeah, it more keeps you, mentally it keeps me more fresher because if you're playing football, you come home you're watching football, you're listening to other people speak about football, it can get too much and it can be like, it can cause you mental problems for sure. Yeah, no uh, psychologist is going to tell you to focus 100% of your energy yeah. mentally on and, one and thing. And they want, and yeah, I've, I've read about things and, and what other people have done and yeah, I just know myself, I've got, I feel like I have a good kind of routine where, yeah, I'm able to just get away from everything. Like my time on the course, yeah, I love doing it, but the, the added bonuses, I can get away from everything, get away from football. And especially if things are going bad, I can just be out there and just not think about anything. Just have a ball, <laughs> some green grass, a few bunkers. <laughs> right. And yeah, just it's just nice to get away from everything and just have a nice game of golf with no stress and pressure. What is, um, in, in, in golf, aside from the results, aside from making a birdie <laughs> or like hitting a perfect drive. What's your favorite like sensation in golf that doesn't have to do with results? Um, I just like going out to play. Like just thinking I've got 18 holes ahead of me. <laughs> it's just being away from everything and you can really just kind of get away from the football, get away from anything negative that's going on and then, yeah, you can kind of reset your mind and kind of the next day you feel a bit more fresher and ready to go and and you're ready to concentrate and feel better about football again. Yeah, it's almost like um, it's almost like therapy, right? Is that you sort of get a chance to let the things settle without sitting there focusing on the problem. Yeah, and 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 definitely, as I said, mainly if if things are going bad, that's probably the biggest example to use. That yeah, if you're if you if just say if you've had a bad game, then you've got the next day off. You don't want to sit at home thinking, oh, I should have done this, should have done that. It's not healthy for anybody. So yeah, to go out on the golf course, you're able just to forget about everything, unwind, not have just like that buildup of negative thoughts and getting on top of yourself. You can just go out, play golf, really relax, unwind. And then, yeah, when you have to come back to then thinking about football, you're a lot more fresher. Right. And you can just really then concentrate and you're ready to go again. So as far as uh, football, what is the sensation that is like really pleasant to you that doesn't have to do with results? Um, <laughs> it's, it, I think the thing with football now is everything's based around results. That's the problem. It's when it's like if you're a professional golfer, everything's just based off results. Um, 
you, know, you the thing is you might in football you might play amazing not score for five games and then everyone would say oh he's having a terrible time and it's like and you think to yourself i've been playing well i just haven't scored or i haven't assisted i've been working hard for the team but people don't they just like goals they just like assists they just like wow things and sometimes that doesn't always happen but you f- it's like a golfer when they're playing well but they may be just not scoring well that's kind of how the it is in football and the thing is now everything's based on results if you go and play terrible but you go and score two goals oh 10 out of 10 and it's like but even when i do that i play terrible and then i go and score two goals and i'm like oh, so bad but then the but then you go and like everyone will go oh great game i'm like oh, i played so bad interesting <laughs> which which in football everything's based off results you can have three tap-ins and not touch the ball all game but you you can be an amazing player but from my point of view i i people can have their own opinions as long as i know i've tried my best and i've played as well as i can then i'm happy with that i remember when i was younger i first came through at southampton where my first team that i um made it to the first team and obviously i was 16 when i made my debut i just kind of played my first few games and you kind of read the newspaper, you read the match report and you haven't played so well. And it said, oh, you had a terrible game and it, your confidence just goes like yeah. that. And I remember speaking to my mum, she was like, you shouldn't read, just don't read anything. Whoa. And just read like books, <laughs> like Darwin. But like, just don't read because everyone has their opinion. Like you might have played well, not scored. Someone will write a terrible thing, but you might have played terrible, scored and they write something good. But it's just people's opinions. If you know you've played well, but people maybe think you haven't, I think that's the most important thing as an athlete to know, to have that self kind of, right, I, I did good, even though what they say, I don't care. As long as I know, it keeps my confidence there. Probably even, not even an athlete. I mean, even well, for me, yeah, I feel yeah. like. I'm just looking from an athlete's perspective. Sure. Yeah, for sure, in, in any walk of life. But Do you have like a personal Instagram account just with friends no, and family? No, I, I just, Have you thought about it? No, I don't. I just I want you to make one of those. 100 <laughs> followers, <laughs> private. <laughs> it, would be, it would be nice, but... Um, what do you got? You got like 45 million followers on Instagram. Something like that, There's, yeah. there's, there's millions and millions <laughs> of people. Yeah, it's where I, I am involved in it. Yeah. Like if, if they need a video or a picture or whatever I'm doing, right. whatever. But you're not scrolling through reading the comments. Oh, no, no. But I think yeah. it's it's healthy... As, a, as an athlete not to go on there because just by reading there might be 1,000 amazing comments yeah. if there's that one bad one you're just going to focus on that one yeah. bad one and it's going to hurt your confidence which then will affect you in your job so why would you bother? Yeah. And for the mental side of it there's just no point in doing it. So let's bring that back to golf mentally speaking how do you approach the game of golf to give you the most amount of success? Um, It sounds weird but the last, I'd say the last year, whenever I play bad, I actually enjoy trying to get it back. Wait, like on the fourth hole, you're like, oh, double bogey. Let's, this is our go time. <laughs> yeah, but like I might be, for example, I played yesterday and I hit my drive so bad, but I just found it interesting to try and get it back. The like, drive or, or, the, or the ball? So, my, so I was hitting my driver bad. I'd hit one fairway with right. my driver. I one hit, fairway? With my driver. Out of 14? No, but I hit four iron four times and a rescue which i hit the fairway okay so i hit six fairways yesterday one with my driver wow. and i missed the rest anyway um but i quite enjoy now instead of getting frustrated and going ah, i quite enjoy trying to figure it out how to get my driver back and then coming down 18 what do i do i straight down the middle <laughs> oh really so I, I quite enjoy that as we used to before i would get frustrated and i'd swing quicker and i'd get angry not angry as where i'd throw clubs but just get frustrated within yourself as we're now I quite enjoy trying to get it back to where it was. How do you think you got to that state of mind? By learning that getting mad and doesn't help any whatsoever because you just get worse and worse and worse until you calm down. So seems like footballers do experience benefits from getting mad. True or false? Yeah, but yeah, yeah, definitely. Cause if I'm not playing well and I get angry, at least you just get that. As long as you give an effort, you give more effort when you're angry because I think it's just natural. But yeah, sometimes anger on the full pitch has helped me a lot um, because it's more of a physical contact game. You can be more aggressive and then you might win a couple of balls in a tackle. And yeah, it definitely helps you in, in, in soccer. 
Not so much. <laughs> I appreciate that. Thank you. You're welcome. Um, you must have some sort of like translation or, uh, you know, a calculation, right? You spend most of your life engaged in a team sport where you're an individual standout. Golf, you're an amateur, but it's all you. Yeah. It's kind of an interesting... Yeah, I know it. And it's a nice change because in a team, it's not you're not relying just on you. Like, you can play amazing. And if the other 10 play terrible, you're not going to win probably 19, well, 999 times out of 1,000. <laughs> right. But in golf, if you play well, you have the whole chance of winning. It's just, it's just you rely on yourself. You don't have to rely on anyone else. But then at the same time, if you play bad and the other 10 play good, they, they save you sometimes. <laughs> so there are pluses and negatives. But no, I just like the fact that it's different. It's not a team sport mainly. And yeah, I can just play my own ball and yeah, just enjoy having no pressure of anyone else. <laughs> when you kick the ball as hard as you can, how fast does the ball go? Do you know miles per hour? I did it a, a, a while ago. I, I'm not sure. It's got to be, what do you know? We did that thing in when we went to the Adidas lab in Germany. We did. There was they created a new app. I can't remember. It's probably on YouTube somewhere. I mean, it's got to be like seventy miles an hour, right? Oh, it's over a hundred. Over a hundred. Yeah. That's it's insane. Funny. Yeah, it was. Because <laughs> you're looking for speed, right? Um. Yeah, but I think accuracy is probably more important. Right. Because if you go and smash it hundred miles an hour straight at the keeper. Yeah. I'd rather hit it 80 miles an hour in the corner. He's got no hope. What's your favorite corner? Are you allowed to tell? <laughs> well, it depends if the goalkeeper's a list. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, I'd, you must have a favorite corner. No, you must yeah, look at a goal and just yeah, like the if, upper. Which, yeah, the which, upper right hand upper side. Upper right, yeah? Yeah, upper right. Is I don't my, know why I got that. It's, it's always better the right. Left. It's like... Low, yeah, all the right-hand side is my favorite side. Because you're coming in with the left foot. Because you can hit it harder going. It's like a draw goes further than a fade. So you oh, go right. harder. And it's also probably bigger. There's yeah. more room. Yeah. Whereas with your left foot on the left side of the goal, it's it's like... And plus for the right side, you started on the inside of the goal going away from it. Right. That's where if you go to the other side, you have to start it outside the post to get it in because you curl it. You, like, you, Interesting. You draw it. Are most it. football players left foot or right foot? Most are right footed. There's, really? Yeah, it's, I don't know what the. It's probably a good stat to actually look up to see because yeah. it's left. It's like left hand and right hand. Could this be why you're so expensive? Is the left foot? <laughs> it does help <laughs> for sure because in a team you'd normally need four. If you were going perfect position, like obviously you don't know formations in football, but you'd need. How do you know? <laughs> you, you, you probably normally need four left footers in a team if you were going perfectly. And you're running up the left side. Yeah. Right. But now I play on the right because I Why? cut in and shoot rather than go down the line and cross it. They changed your position. So you, yeah, you can do it different ways. Like I started on the left, but now I'm playing on the right. So. By the way, the football community is going to start trolling me now. Yeah, I know. They're gonna, I'm going to get it. You <laughs> might get some more followers, but, it might not be, <laughs> but you might get some stick for it at the same time. Oh my God. All right, let's go. Let's go play some golf. Um, sun's going to set pretty soon here. Um, I think how many we're gonna do Ace Cam. Oh yes, we're I gonna, like I gonna, like Ace Cam. We're gonna park on a par three. You um, you you how many hole ones do you? have? Absolutely zero. I would think with three par threes. Yeah, in your no, background, I would think the same thing as well, but it it just hasn't materialized. Because <laughs> because I mean a par a hole in one. I mean there's no goalie. But in my defense, my my greens are astroturf. Ah, so the so the ball doesn't sit. So it, it it does spin. If you hit it perfectly, you'll get some spin, or if the wind's correct. But more a lot, it'll it'll check and it won't really run out, or it won't spin back so much. So it's more difficult. But I did that for more for maintenance reasons because sure. I don't want to be spending hundred no, thousand a year just looking after three greens, and I'm not there for that. You play three 90, times, yeah. yeah. So, um, but yeah, I, I I've been close a few times. I've hit the pin. I've spun. And gone, yeah. It's just it just feels like it's never coming. <laughs> well, I love that you're into golf. I'm so excited that we're here together. I'm yeah. so excited that we're in this that Taylor made brought us out. We've got this wonderful fitting studio. It was great to watch you hit some shots. Thank you. Um I'm excited to go play. I mean <laughs> Is is there any questions you have for me before we get out and be which we're about to be 
We're about to hate each other. It's about to be full opponent. Well, that might be you. I'm, I'm, I, I enjoy my, <laughs> I enjoy my opponents. I'm kidding. <laughs> I, I would prefer if you win. To be honest with you, uh, I'm on a losing streak here. I was Ooh. undefeated for a while. I beat Rick Shields, Peter Finch, a couple others, and then uh, Brian Baumgartner is, is he's a hustler. <laughs> we actually tied. Andre Godala beat me pretty soundly, and then Jim Fish, the CEO of Waste Management. He beat me like I think we the match to cut cut pretty short. <laughs> I would love it if we could tie. I'm not asking you to fix the match or anything. It could be sorted. But <laughs> I don't. I, don't. I didn't do you, make a money gesture. Do you, I, I, I can't afford it. I can't afford it. Uh, do you have any questions for me before we end the pod? Um, not really. I haven't really prepared anything. But I will say while you think about it, to the to the people listening. To my friends listening to the podcast, to the people listening on YouTube, one of the biggest compliments of my life, walking in here and you said, I've seen some of your videos. Yeah. I don't know, to me, that meant a lot. And my, my wife goes, are you watching him again? <laughs> really? <laughs> yeah. Oh my goodness, I'm so... Uh, well, I, I enjoy the, it. I think, I think what you do is, is really good. It's, I like, the videos are really cool watching them, especially the, the Ace Cam. I love Ace Cam. Uh, get ready. Such a great idea. We we did a whole series of Ace Game videos with all of the TaylorMade staff okay. players. Well, except for Tiger and Rory and Rom. But we did it with DJ, Jason Day, um, and uh, Colin Morikawa, Bo Hostler, Maria Fossey. And, uh, I mean, it was really fun to see players yeah. of that level yeah. firing at the pin over and over. We'll get a chance to do that today. Okay. Sounds, sounds fun. I would love for you to get. I mean, if you get a home, oh, I would one, love to get one as well. If you get, a, I mean, oh, I can't wait to, to 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 tease it out a little bit. One of the t tailor made players got a hole in one. Don't say. Okay. Yeah. I yeah. told you earlier. Yeah, yeah. No, I know. I won't say. You anything. can't tell. I won't say anything. Don't tell. Don't, if you go on your Instagram <laughs> and tell forty five <laughs> bazillion people, I can't get on it. You you can't I even log in. Password. You don't even have your login. No. Nope. I love it. No, I definitely go, can't read anything. Let's go better. live on your story. <laughs> All right, everybody. So thank you so much, Gareth. Thank you, thank you for having um, me. You can follow Gareth Bale, but he won't know. <laughs> you'll be, you'll be, <laughs> he won't even know. Okay. All right, we'll see you on the golf course in two seconds. Thanks for listening, everybody.